Hello and welcome to the 2023 TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar Competition. The aim is very simple. We're trying to see who has the best all-round streetcar in the country. But the judging criteria is a lot more than simply just the performance numbers. Now, the reigning champions, Precision Racing, are back with not one, not two, but seven twin-turbo V10 monsters and three R35 GTRs. But we've also got some pretty cool skylines and stuff in the mix as well. This year, we've split the competition into pre and post 2007 to make the cars more competitive with each other. First up, we're going to show you the judging criteria so you can see how the event is scored and how you have a chance to win. Although we've tried to make judging the TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar competition objective, there will always be subjective opinions on what makes the best streetcar. We have come up with a judging criteria that we think works and combines the right combination of both. Cars must first drive from Yas to Kutamundra Airport and on day one we have engineering judging worth 10 points done by one of our staff with an engineering background Presentation judging, also worth 10 points, done by the guys from TurboSmart. A drivability test that I performed based on 20 years of driving various modified cars and a handling course worth 20 points. Then during the Tuner's Edge drag battle and PRP GTR challenge, we send them down Kutamundra Airport's runway to see how fast they are. We take an average of their best two runs with ET worth 20 points and mile per hour worth 20 points. The performance data is scaled with the slowest car getting 5 points, the fastest getting 20 and the rest scaled in between and a DNF gives 0. We met the guys at Yas Service Centre on the Thursday morning and got ready to roll. Kyle's Audi TT RS has been to Kudamundra before, but it was his first time competing in the TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar Challenge. The five-cylinder Dazza engine and dual-clutch transmission may be stock, but don't be fooled, this is a nine-second streetcar. TTR 700 turbocharger, APR inlet and APR intercooler, upgraded exhaust and fuel system, all fitted and tuned by Northside Euros. Upgraded rotors and pads and Koya SF13 wheels with Bridgestone tyres for street and circuit but switches to drag radials for the strip. Inside there is a rear seat delete, harness bar and bucket seat required for how hard this car goes round corners. The car scored 6 out of 10 in presentation and 8.5 out of 10 for engineering. Now to see how it drives. Yeah, it's just standard bolt-ons, uh, you have know, 600 horsepower at all four wheels, uh, running on E85, street car as it is. and. Uh, Third time at uh, CUDA, second time being the uh, racing, so the third time attending, and uh, yeah, just hit it essentially try and win Ultimate Streetcar as well because uh, I reckon I've got, got a few things in the bag and uh, just with how the car handles and everything, custom suspension and a few other tweaks that not many other people have. Uh, tying into uh, just, you know, uh, personal best times, I want to beat my street time of 988, uh, that was on street tyres and currently got the Hoosiers in the back somewhere as well, so I'm going to be throwing them on tomorrow and, uh, you know, lighting them up and just go from there. Yeah. 
that you do a hill run on that. Yeah, exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Well, most of our viewers know that I'm a big fan of the all-wheel drive five-cylinder Audis, and the TT RS is, man, they are just so good. I've driven one that does eight-second passes. It's actually great to drive one that's more of a high nine-second one that can be used for everything. The drivability in this is as good as standard. Um, you can cruise in it every day. And then when you want to have fun, like if you want to do a hills run or something like that, the handling is just exceptional. And this one isn't overpowered, uh, which they are if you sort of got like an eight second TTRS. So this is probably the perfect balance between streetability, uh, handling, and then being able to run a high nine second pass. But the good thing is this car can launch anytime, anywhere on the street. And man, it would be tough to beat on a traffic light Grand Prix. So uh, as a street car, yeah, this is very, very tough act to follow. quickest manual GTR at the event and also the quickest Skyline GTR outright was Romanos's R34 GTR RHM from B2R Motorsport. His new combo is a 3.4 litre stroker billet block with B2R Motorsport's head package and Ross Performance Parts dry sump kit. He went up a size in turbo from a precision 8085 to a Pro Mod 88 with a custom rear housing. It sits on a six boost exhaust manifold with turbo smart external wastegate and blows through a plasma man intercooler and into a plasma man inlet manifold with burst panel. Why the burst panel you ask? Well, because of the nitrous now on board to spool the turbo. The Link G4X controls the show and the car has made a tad over 1700 horsepower at the hubs. Power goes through a direct clutch services nine inch twin plate clutch and Albin six speed sequential transmission with a Quaife front LSD and Hollinger 9-inch rear diff and billet axles all round. Inside are carbon seats and Motec digital dash. The outside looks hot with Nismo front bumper, vented hood and Motive headlight duct. It runs 18-inch wheels and Raiden Hero drag radials required to fit over the R35 GTR brake upgrade. Why big brakes and 18s? Well, this is a genuine street car the car scored 9 out of 10 for presentation and 8 out of 10 for engineering. I, th I think overall it's, it's a pretty streetable car. I think Andrew's got to like it. Uh, fingers crossed he does. You think it'll do okay around I that think, road I, think, I think it'll do okay. All right, man. Good luck out there, bro. Thanks, man. say this, getting to drive RHM is a privilege and an honour on its own, even if you're only asked to move it from one driveway to the next driveway. <laughs> and um, even driving that on 900, 850, 900, I was actually surprised with the, the custom 88 mil turbo that's in that thing now. I was waiting for that thing to basically never come on without nitrous, but it's actually still way more drivable than I expected. Don't get me wrong, it's not going to win any awards for being the most responsive at 3,000 RPM, but that's yeah. not what that car's about. But can you drive it on a car cruise and around town? Well, once you're used to the clutch, which I didn't stall it, um, but once you're used to, if you're used to GDRs, you can drive this thing around. That's, that's really what this entire competition is about. Can it be driven to and from the track? Can you drive it to the shops? Can you drive on a cruise? And you do, right? I do. Make us drive through every now and then, so yeah. <laughs> Mission accomplished. So it's mission accomplished, man. Like, and that's the thing with this car is beyond whatever the drivability is like. The thing I love about GTRs the most that make a thousand plus with sequential is you just always feel like a bad mother. Well done.
Audi R8's a pretty handy all-round street car out of the box. But Matt's from Precision Racing is made even better with the addition of a Precision Racing Stage 1 Plus Turbo Kit. It uses 64mm Precision Turbochargers, Turbo Smart External Wastegates and Blow-Off Valves with PR Spec Interchillers, PR Billet Inlet Manifold in Gold and PR Motec ECU Package. It may be stock engine but still produces 1,077 horsepower at the hubs in street trim with potential for more. Looks wise, the larger wing is all that is added to that perfect colour combination. The car has carbon ceramic brakes inside the Boost Logic wheels. It uses Nankangs up front and Mickey Thompson drag radials at the back. The interior is already well appointed from factory, so no need to mess with it. The car scored 8 out of 10 for presentation and 8 out of 10 for engineering. Pretty much had it for two days and put it straight on the truck, straight from Graziani, straight to Precision. And um, told Aaron, I said, mate, there's a car on the way. And that was it. Within, I think, 7 to 10 days, they got it done. You wouldn't even know it had turbos on it. So you put your foot down. Trying to fault an Audi R8 is almost impossible when it comes to drivability. Everything about this car is purely, I guess, subjective to the person that drives it. Um, when this thing is turned down on its level four map, making about a thousand and thousand and fifty, it is just so easy to drive fast. You could almost let anyone go and do that down the runway, to be brutally honest. It's not till you turn them up to sort of 13, 1400 horsepower, they can get a little bit, well, a little bit spicy and you've actually got to have a little bit of driving talent to kind of keep them in a straight line. But what I do love is this thing, you could drive every day, anywhere, to the shops, to dinner, etc., and you can just still drive it like a normal Audi R8. Um, and with the power turned down, it's not as violent as as it can be so yeah man big thumbs up to what precision racing are doing with these twin turbo v10s and matt's r8 is that's very hard to fault there's a reason why i really want one of these and driving that just made it even worse it is just they're just too good they really are A new R35 build from Precision Racing was Nathan Brown's PR12 equipped model. So new that he had never driven it until this event. The PR12 engine package uses a billet 3.8 litre crank and this particular PR12 turbo kit uses Garrett GTX 3576 turbochargers with turbo smart 45mm external wastegates and blows through Precision Racing spec intercoolers into an AMS inlet manifold. Precision Racing MoTeC package and fuel system provides 1300 horsepower on 50 psi. A PR12 transmission upgrade uses a PPG gear set, upgraded clutches, and a wave track LSD, and there is drive shaft shop axles all round. Being a 2020 model, the stock suspension works just fine, and this car has a ceramic brake upgrade, and the billet specialty wheels are wrapped in Mickey Thompson drag radials. Uh, first time here at Kudamundra. Very excited to be here today. Uh, you know, obviously, had the first time, actually, it's the first time I've driven the car today, so um, I've got a bit to learn. I've driven it stock, it's had 5,000 k's on it. Uh, I've never driven it uh, under these conditions of PR12, no, not at all. Did first, you give it a hit time. on the way here? I did on the highway, but yeah. I expect uh, you're going to give it a bigger hit here. Oh no, no, no. We, can, we can do whatever you want. First up we test is what's it like to drive to the shops. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> oh, I gotta ask. <laughs> is it weird that someone else just drove your car on a full hit like that before you did? It is, but at least I know what I'm in for now. Now, I've driven a lot of R35s in the Turbo Smart Ultimate Streetcar Challenge, and I will say this over the years of driving them, they're just getting better and better. What I was really excited about with Nathan's car, though, is it's a 2020 model, so it's pretty fresh. Only 5,000 Ks on the clock, and I'll be honest, it does reflect in the way that it drives. This thing is. That's as good as it gets for having a, you know, an eight-second R35 GTR streetcar. I mean, the little things that change drivability are subjective once again. So having, you know, the carbon seats and harnesses, some people don't mind that. Others might go, eh, but you know what? You could swap the factory seats back in. Having drag radios on obviously affects the way that it drives, but you need it for the power. So everything's just that little bit of a balancing act. But overall... Man, this thing has smoother gear changes than factory when you drive it in manual mode. It is unbelievable. You drive it slowly, it has soft gear changes. Drive it flat out, razor sharp gear changes. So with the guys from Precision Racing, just they outdo themselves every year with how good these things drive. And this thing is, I mean, really, these things are what Ultimate Streetcar is all about. Pretty much this package has won the event before. That's how good it is. One of the most hotly anticipated cars at this year's event was Tony's twin turbo Huracan Performante. This is one of the big daddy builds with built engine and 76 mil turbochargers in the Precision Racing Stage 4 2000 horsepower package. Precision Racing spec intercoolers and billet inlet manifold and a PR Motec ECU package. The transmission is upgraded to PR Stage 2 spec with PPG and billet parts inside and the axles are upgraded as well. The exterior and interior are pretty hard to improve on the Performante, with ceramic brakes and forged carbon and aero mods everywhere. The car drove to the event on stock wheels wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sports but switched to bell axe and drag radials for the strip. The car scored 9.5 out of 10 for presentation and 9 out of 10 for engineering. First time here at Cuda to go through the competitions. Looking forward to it and have a bit of fun. All right, so this is the Mac Daddy of the Lambos in the fleet, right? It's got the biggest turbo setup, biggest everything, doesn't it? Yep. But the big question is, what does it drive like normally? Has, it, has it changed it at all? Like, is it does it still drive similar to before? Or? Yeah, very much similar. Yeah. A little bit more noise from the gearbox, um, which is, you know... You've got to do what you got to do, right, at this at this level? Fully built gears and everything like that to make yeah. it last. Yeah. And the gearbox is holding up beautifully. I had a lot of problems in development yeah. on different gear sets and different gears and breaking stock gears <laughs> and gearboxes. And it's nearly at 2,000, right, on yeah. the dyno. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. I know how fast these are on 1450. I, another 500 is just... Yeah, it's a little bit different. <laughs> it's, um, the acceleration and the Gs don't stop. Right, so if you're trying to drive a little bit assertive, what's it like? Out of all the cars here, there's only a couple that have made me a little bit nervous before I drive them based on their reputation of what you've seen them do at roll racing. And Tony's Lambo is one of them. Over 1,900 horsepower is, that's some pretty serious stuff. This is probably their fastest twin turbo V10 or this and George's together. But when it's turned down to 1450, it's actually surprisingly very manageable. As crazy as that sounds, that we're living in a world where I can say that 1450 horsepower is actually really smooth and easy to drive. 
is crazy and just more proof that precision racing just know what they're doing when it comes to this platform the big difference between what this car and the one that makes 1450 with the smaller turbo kit is just how aggressive it is so the larger turbos actually help make it come on smoother and more progressive when it's on that power level i'm sure at 1900 it's a different story but on 1450 this one is nicer to drive than the one with the smaller turbos just because of how controllable and drivable it is as it comes on to boost but as you can see from giving it a hit Wow, it just keeps pulling like a freight train. But you could drive that around on that power level all day. 1900, well, that's a different story. That's, that's, that's race. That's when you actually want to go racing. But street ability, we're on street tyres, 450 horsepower. We can use it all. And that's what this competition's all about. I could take my missus to dinner in this and then go to roll racing at night, drop my daughter at school the next day. Like, that is... What more can you ask for? We are splitting hairs now to try and work out which of these cars is the best to drive. This is crazy. Total contrast now, Dave's R33 Skyline GTS 25T. The GTR gets all the glory, but the little brother can make for a great car when modified correctly. Street Fryer uses an RB30 block and 26 head combination similar to plenty of big GTR builds, but rear wheel drive with an HGT sequential transmission. A 7675 precision turbocharger sits on a six boost manifold, turbo smart external wastegate, blows into a plasma man intercooler and inlet manifold. There is PRP R35 coil packs and the car runs a Link G4X ECU with multiple maps and traction control strategies. The brakes are stock size but with upgraded rotors and pads and the T37s are wrapped in Nankang AR1s for the street but it runs drag radials for the strip. Inside is Sparco bucket seats and wheel and a Howtech IC7 digital dash. The R33 scored 6 out of 10 for presentation, 6.5 out of 10 for engineering. This is my first time doing the streetcar challenge and just come out for a bit of a fun, really. thing I'll say about Wiley's car is it's a surprise package. Uh, it's a GDST, so normally expect with a thousand plus horsepower and a street tire, you'd never be able to put it down. But the guys at B2 have done a great job with traction control strategies, setup, boost curve, where it brings in the torque. This thing's super drivable, makes it really predictable and a heap of fun. This is this is a big surprise package. I'm I'm actually mega impressed with how drivable and enjoyable this GDST is. Love it, love it. Turbo Smart Ultimate Streetcar and Tuner's Edge Drag Battle Champion, George, in his precision racing twin turbo Audi R8, returned to Cootamundra Airport for another crack at the title. The car now has a built bottom end to handle the 76mm turbochargers. It's part of the Stage 4 package, capable of 2,000 horsepower. There is Turbo Smart external wastegates and blow valve, precision racing spec into chillers and Beale up inlet manifold, and there is the PR Motec ECU package. The transmission is upgraded to PR Spec Stage 2 with PPG and billet internals and the axles are also upgraded. R8s are more subtle than Lambos but the forge line wheels wrapped in drag radials look great with ceramic brakes inside. 
The interior of the R8 doesn't really require any changes either. The car scored 9 out of 10 for presentation and 8 out of 10 for engineering. It's my second time at Ultimate Streetcar Challenge. Uh, last year I won it and I'll see if I can do back to back. All right, how you going, George? Not too bad, and yourself? All right, I'm back, you're yeah. back, yes. we're back, uh, the car's back, but it's different. The only thing really different about it is probably an extra 500. Yeah. And a set of tyres, that's it, rims. Yeah. You forge on rims and that's it. Now, last time, this one Ultimate Streetcar last Correct. time. So essentially, everything drivability-wise should be identical to last time, except you've got a slightly different tyre on it. And Correct. that's it. I mean, the built engine and the more power isn't going to matter for drivability, right? Correct. That's it's just, right, yeah. So really, this year, the extra power is going to help you when it comes to, obviously, for racing the, it and yeah, getting your score drags. for 18 mile an hour. Correct, yeah. so, and trying to keep your drag battle record. Correct. So, uh, <laughs> so this will have uh, basically the same power as you drove last time. Yep. Uh, different wheel combo, and when we do the uh, drag racing, we'll turn it up. Perfect. Let's go. You can really feel there's like a point. Where it doesn't even matter if you're on part throttle. There's a point right. at which it goes. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> let's go, let's go. Yeah, let's do it again. Yeah, alright, we go. I love that you can roll into it so well. Alright, here we go. Try to get up a bit higher, about 5,000 and then step on it. Roll on from there. Alright, here at 5 and... So, last year's Turbo Smart Ultimate Streetcar winner, George's R8. It came back this year with a built engine, uh, a more modified gearbox that can hold more power, and on full power, it has 1900 plus. Very close to 2000 if they give it everything. Now, I was given the car on 1450 horsepower, which is about 100 more than last year, and the only difference in drivability from last year is it's a slightly different wheel and tyre combo, and I'm going to be honest with you, you can still drive this around normally. You really can. It's like it has two personalities below 5000 rpm just cruise it around it's fine but once you go past 5000 this thing wants you to go and the power is just so accessible it's it's ridiculous i can't believe we live in a world now where a 1450 horsepower is the lower power setting and is completely usable um, and so much fun and yeah second gear just gets you moving but once third gear hits in this thing it just smacks you in the face it is super addictive super fun uh, yeah, just I can't get over how good these things are from precision racing. Uh, it's it is such a tough pick, but this is defending champion. I think my prediction is when it comes to the scoring, uh, I think the 18 mile an hour is probably going to decide a lot of these cars. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Maybe the handling course will split them. But when it comes to drivability, it's very hard to pick between a lot of these cars. We are splitting hairs once again. First time competitor, but returning car was Chris's twin turbo Huracan Performante from Precision Racing. Now sporting a Precision Racing Stage 2 kit, which means built engine with 64mm turbochargers and enabling horsepower to be pushed to 1450. There is Turbo Smart external wastegates and blow valves, Precision Racing spec intercoolers and billet inlet manifold, and the PR Motec ECU package. The transmission is upgraded to PR Stage 2 specification with PPG and billet internals and the axles are also upgraded. Being a Performante means the exterior and interior presentation and engineering, encompassing the aero package, big brakes and upgraded suspension means the Performante doesn't need many upgrades outside of the driveline. Chris's Performante scored 9.5 out of 10 for presentation and 9 out of 10 for engineering. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Never gets old. It's so weird hearing that come Take out of a Lamborghini, isn't it? Take your mates for a drive. <laughs> Two little girls giggling the whole time. fun. Uh, the last time I drove this it had about 1150, 1200 and I didn't know what to expect with how violent it would be or how usable it would be because one of the first twin turbo Lambos I drove was like, quite aggressive. This though you can tell Precision have been working on their packages and it was just it was perfect. Um, able to put the power down even when the tyres were initially cold, straight into it, even with the drag radial on still felt super stable, easy to use the power and man it <sighs> Like Chris said, if, if you can giggle like a little schoolgirl after giving this little hit with your mates in the car, job done, right? Like, it's just so much fun and so addictive. And um, the amount of speed we're able to put on in that car comfortably and not be stressed out, it's just out of control. Like, I cannot get over just how good that car is. And the best thing is, you can take those drag radios off, you can put a set of performance tyres back on, probably turn it to a 1,000 and still go out and do the handling course in this thing or do a track day or whatever, or a hills run, etc. It's just... Very hard to beat, very, very hard to beat, and so much fun. Mr. GTR is a proven streetcar monster, having done plenty of trips from Melbourne to Sydney and back and taken out the Roll Racing Workshop Challenge and running into the Sevens at GTR Festival. It runs a PR16 kit with Garrett G35,050s with TurboSmart external wastegates, Plasma Man intercoolers and AMS carbon inlet manifold. Precision Racing fuel system and MoTeC package, as well as their transmission upgrade, is there to support a little over 1,600 horsepower. Inside, there is a MoTeC dash and carbon seats. Outside, there is billet specialty wheels in gold, wrapped in drag radials with carbon ceramic brakes. Imran's car scored 8.5 out of 10 for presentation and 9 out of 10 for engineering. first time driving Imran's car but it's certainly no less impressive than last time. This thing drives around on 1400 horsepower and makes 1600 plus turned up a little bit further. Now here's the thing with R35s, it's kind of like any car, right? There's a level you can go where they're still super drivable and can almost be stock-like in their drivability. But when you get to this sort of level, you have to step it up a notch with the gearboxes and the tune uh, and obviously monster turbos to make that power. So this would never be as drivable as a PR12 kit. But when you take a step back and think of it from this way, a seven second R35 Five, can you still drive it around normally on the street? And the answer is yes. But it's all about scalability, right? Like, is it as drivable as a thousand horsepower one? Of course not. It's got monster turbos on it and, you know, crazy gearbox in it. But overall, like I said, still perfectly able to drive these cars around on the street the way they are, which is just a testament to technology, a testament to precision racing and the cars that you can now buy, build and modify. This, what a world we live in, right? And the smile it brings to your face when you give it a hit, like it just says it all, like it really does. And I'm just gonna keep saying this, trying to split these cars in this competition is incredibly difficult.
something totally new to not just the Turbo Smart Ultimate Streetcar Challenge, but to Cootamundra Airport was Fonza's Mazda MPS. It's an all-wheel drive and turbocharged saloon, but it's rare to see one on the road, let alone a modified one, as pretty much everything is custom. Like the 6466 Precision Turbocharger, Mishimoto intercooler setup, and the billet intake manifold. The custom fuel system in the boot is also pretty cool, and it's all controlled by a Motec M150 ECU with the ability to make up to 700 wheel horsepower. The interior has a few custom touches and some carbon, as does the exterior as well. The MPS receives six out of 10 for presentation and five out of 10 for engineering. Uh, yeah, the first time, yeah. So um, yeah, keen to give it a go and have some fun. Not many people do them up. Um... But yeah, they're a bit different. They've got direct injection and board injection. Um, so yeah, you know, I've done the fuel system myself. Uh, two four, uh, 460 Warbros in a surge tank. And um, yeah, look, you know, surprisingly it's stock box just with twin plate clutch. Um, upgraded rear diff mounts. The diff is stock as well. Transfer case is stock. Um, just upgraded billet caps. And um, yeah, a built motor, but yeah. to expect with a Mazda MPS for a couple of reasons. I've actually never driven one before and secondly, I don't think I've ever really seen a highly modified one that makes some serious grunt. So it was very much going into that going, just didn't know what to expect. Um, if you want to compare it to something that probably drove like an Evo more than it drove like anything else. Um, I mean, not talking about handling, but just drivability and stuff. But yeah, big precision turbo on it, 500 kilowatts uh, with a 2.3 litre. It's actually pretty good. And obviously driving H pattern's a bit of a change to everything else at this event. So um, look, it puts a smile on your face. I mean, is it the fastest thing here? No, but is it fun and different and unique? Yes, but here's the thing actually drove pretty much like a standard MPS should do. It just has more grunt, which is um, a pretty good testament to sort of how that car's been built. So um, overall, pretty impressed. Unfortunately, a mechanical issue put the MPS out of the competition and it was a DNF for the handling course. Precision Racing bought along one of their own cars, a Lamborghini Huracan with a Stage 1 Plus turbo kit. This means stock engine and transmission and even the stock inlet manifold but a 64mm turbo kit with turbo smart external wastegates and blow off valve, precision racing intercoolers and Motec ECU package. It may sound basic, but it still pumps out over a thousand horsepower, showing how epic these V10 twin turbo setups really are. It may look more restrained when parked next to a Performante, but a stock Huracant is still a good looking piece of kit inside and out and the Boost Logic wheels sit over carbon ceramic brakes with drag radials. To prove how capable the car is as a street car, the guys put Amy from Precision Racing behind the wheel for the event. She's not only never raced at the track before, she's actually never driven one of the Lamborghini Twin Turbos until this event. The car scored six and a half out of 10 for both presentation and engineering. First time doing drag battle, any racing at all, so very anxious. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I bet. I mean, that's that's a lot of horsepower. Yes. Have you driven anything? Uh, I have driven nothing. No, this is where I'm starting. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, that's quite the ride to start with. <laughs> yes, yeah, a little bit spoiled and a little bit scared. All right, so let's get this clear for our viewers. Yep. It's sort of your car. Sort of. Because if it's the shop's car, it's yeah. automatically Mine. third, half. Yeah. How does that work? Uh, third? Half of uh, half of Aaron, so a quarter. It's a yeah, quarter yours. A quarter. So it's a quarter your car, but yeah. it's actually a car that's been bought in turbo kit yep. but stock engine and it's for sale for sale for sale one lamborghini huracan twin turbo never been thrashed never been thrashed. driven by a, a fe one female owner one fe um, <laughs> yeah. and only driven to church on sundays let's go yeah <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh wow. That just said speed limit exceeded. Yeah. Is he still his dad still got a like 110 speed limit on it? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> this where numbers like 14, 15, 16, 1900 horsepower are getting thrown around, when you hear that a Lambo only has about 1150 horsepower, you think to yourself, ah, oh, will this one be as fun as the others? But then you kind of get a reality check and realise that is still crazy fast. And now because it's stock engine, stock gearbox, they've just changed the mapping on, and the pressure on the gearbox for its like electronic control and it's got a turbo kit on it, it still drives amazing and then it just has extra grunt. Honestly, if you're not happy with that on the street, you've got as many problems as I do because you want more, but this would keep most people happy. That is so much fun to drive and so easy to go fast in. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? 1150 horsepower Lambo here is the little baby. This is ridiculous. Returning to Kudamundra Airport for the second time was Ashraf's Lamborghini Huracan being driven by Massimo. It sports a precision racing stage 2 kit, which means built engine and 64mm turbochargers. There is turbo smart external wastegates and blow valves, precision racing intercoolers and billet inlet manifold, and the precision racing MoTeC ECU package. Power with a built engine is over 1400. The car looks mean, lowered over Boost Logic wheels wrapped in drag radials. The car scored 8.5 out of 10 for presentation and 6.5 out of 10 for engineering. What a beautiful sunset. I went driving a twin turbo Lamborghini along a sunset on a runway in a country town. What do they call it? It's like awesome, it's weird, it's like everything in one. All we need is the cow to start moving and then it's perfect. What do you reckon? So this Lamborghini Huracan has tried to kill me before. Um, why? Not because there's anything wrong with it, it was just super aggressive, super responsive and fun car and it can bite you if you get it wrong. Now it's back again and obviously the guys from Precision, they've done a few little tweaks here and there with torque limits and traction control and setup and things like that um, and it's a little bit nicer to drive this time. Not that it was bad last time, it was just really aggressive but it's better this time. Um, and man, I'll tell you one thing, what a difference lowering the car makes. Like lowering it, it looks hot, but it does really actually affect its ability to put power down, kind of like a lot like the Nissan rear ends where if you lower it too much, it affects traction. So that's probably got a lot to do with why this car drives so different to the others is it's a lot lower than the other Lambos that are here. Looks hot, but yeah, it can make it a little bit sketchier um, at speed. But um, yeah, the grunt this thing has, it's almost scary to say that this is now just like the normal 1450 package. Uh, has got clutches but a stock box, so obviously the gearbox can't be pushed as hard. Um, but yeah, overall, still a killer fun car to drive. And um, yeah, wow, it's just, just can't get the smile off my face today. Thanks, Ashraf.
first-timer at Cootamundra, but certainly not a first-time drag racer, was John Ricker. John was the first person to enter a twin-turbo Lambo into Drag Challenge earlier in the year, and then he traded up from the Grey Huracan to this Performante. It runs a Stage 2 precision racing package, so built engine with 64mm turbos and 1450 wheel horsepower. There is turbo smart external wastegates and blow valves, PR billet inlet manifold, and precision racing intercoolers and Motec ECU package. At this power, the transmission has to be upgraded to PR spec Stage 2 with PPG and billet internals and also the axles are upgraded as well. The Performante looks incredible with the active aero and John's car runs Bellac billet wheels wrapped in drag radials all round. Inside the Performante is hard to top and their improved suspension helps make for a better overall car. The Performante scored 9.5 out of 10 for presentation and 9 out of 10 for engineering. It's the first time out here so I don't really know what to expect but um yeah, we'll see how we go. I, I think hopefully we should be around the mid eights um, with a quarter mile. It makes about 1500 horsepower um, at the hub. So yeah, hopefully all goes well and yeah, we can um, have a good weekend. I must admit, I'm a sucker for the Perfect Monte as well. John's Performante. This is pretty much exactly the same as the other one that's in the competition. Um, difference basically is just the tyres. And like I said before, with so many of these cars, you are just splitting hairs when you start talking about drivability. Um, but even after driving every single car here, you still can't get in one of these and not just be blown away with how much accessible performance you really have. The fact that I can get in that and just basically roll on in second and stay pinned and not feel scared or nervous at all. Once again, another massive testament to Precision Racing and their setup, the MoTeC, uh, and just the complete package of the car and the technology we have now. I, I'm just blown away every time I drive them. I really am. It's This is not getting old. I can just keep driving these over and over and over again. That's the easy part. The hard part though, which one's the best? My heart has a soft spot for the Performante, it really does. But there's a judging system, we're gonna stick to it. Let's see what happens, shall we? the uh, loudest applause of anyone today. Really? Yeah, I wonder why. What? I wasn't quite sure what happened. <laughs> he's even got, he's even got oh, grass into a 180 after Yeah, yeah. yeah. So look, they said your experience is in a straight line. I said, yeah, that's why. I've You're never worked. gone around corners. See, so there you go. I said, no one rely on me to, yeah. to, to win this because the chances are I'll be mowing the lawns. I'm going to say two things. It was very obvious you've never gone around corners. Yeah. Um, and secondly, I'm not going to tell you your time, but it was actually pretty good. So be proud. Like okay. if that's your first time in corners, do it again because it's actually pretty good. Cool. It no is. Worries. Well done, man. Awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Now come on, come on. Yeah. The scores after the judge criteria looked like this. Tony's Performante and Chris's Performante were tied on 36 and a half points, with John only half a point behind. 
Both R8s were within two points and tied on 34 and a half. Things got shaken up after the handling course though, as now it was about the driver and car combined and who would push their car the hardest. Some great driving from John Ricker in the Performante and Matt in the R8 saw them move up into first and second place, but it was still very close, with the entire top five separated by four points. And Nathan's R35 jumped up there as well after a decent lap time. Kyle in the Audi TTRS put down the quickest lap time, but Massimo in the Lambo and David in the GTST also fought back with their lap times as well. This means the drag racing ET and mile per hour would most likely determine our outright winner. Each car had to perform three passes with the average of their best two passes used to calculate the scores for ET and mile per hour. Let's see how they all went on day two of the Turbo Smart Ultimate Streetcar Challenge. Quicker. 
It was just quicker. It's an 863. 863. But it was only 172 mile an hour because of all the wheel spin. Right. Uh, that's all good. I'll uh, correct all that and be back out. Too He's good. still the current drag battle record holder with that run. That's actually technically a new record. So oh, very good. So yeah. yeah so happy about that. Now you're just gonna stay there, mate. Yeah. The, the Lambo's nipping well, at your heels. There's a lot of cars out here with a lot of good potential, right? So I'm not underestimating any driver or car. So uh, there's a lot of good cars here. Awesome, man. Well done. Jeez. Thanks, guys. Feel good? It felt good that one actually, yeah. Did it did it feel like a new drag battle record at Kutamundra to you? Are you kidding me? It is. 8-5. Oh, wow, <laughs> we didn't change the tune up from the last pass, so I played with tire pressures a little bit and just tried to get to leave a bit better and it worked so. You are now the quickest not GTR ever at Kutamundra. Awesome. Well awesome. done, man. That's Thanks fantastic. Yeah. Awesome work. Well, this year's 2023 Turbo Smart Ultimate Street Car Challenge, one man turned up that I'm like, are you seriously coming to do this and put it on a handling course and drive from Yas and prove it to street car? And that's from Manos with RHM. But mate, that, that took a lot of balls to bring this thing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> As, uh, look, I, it does get driven on the street quite a bit. Um, so yeah, you know, to come down, you know, support what you're doing here was uh, it was good, and I, I enjoyed it heaps, man. So um, it was a yeah. pleasure. Definitely. Well, obviously this year we split it into pre 2007 and post 2007 because obviously fighting Lambos in 90s JDM stuff gets a bit hard. So you're our pre 2007 winner for Turbo Smart Ultimate Street Car, mate. Well done. Thank, Thank the boys. Uh, big shout out to B2R, Navi, Ben, Av, all the guys actually there, you know, there's been a lot of late hours put in this car, a lot of people don't see it, but the time and the amount of um, effort, like everyone there puts in the car, like big shout out, big thank you, man. Dude, I love this car. Even just getting to drive it on low power is a privilege and honour. Um, I know that hardly anyone's even driven this thing. I know you've taken Javier from TRC for a ride. The whole world's going to see how just how awesome this car is, man. Well done. Thanks, man. Cheers. Cheers. Well, this year, 2023 Tuna's Edge Drag Battle, quickest outright, new record for ET outright for Drag Battle, as well as a new number one on the outright leaderboard at Cootamundra for streetcars, John in the Lamborghini Huracan Perfomonte. Well done, mate. 
Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, I'm I'm lost for words to be honest. So yeah, no, we're we're wrapped. So I mean, obviously, quickest ten cylinder as well. So there's one quickest ten cylinder, yeah. quickest outright, awesome. ultimate. Str you almost did the clean sweep. If you had won the shootout, that would have been like clean sweep. And the big question is from here: Are you coming back? We will be back, and I think we'll be back in the GDR next time. So. Hey, there we go. Yeah, right there. That's right. Fingers crossed. Uh, the 34 will be ready, and um, yeah, we'll be here in that next time. I know a, a driver who can drive the Lambo for you if you know if you're struggling with duties. Well, we might have to bring both. So yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see how we go. Mate, you are defending champion now. You are literally number one for well, pretty much everything you can do here at Cootamundra. You've quit beaten all the True Street GDRs, every other car, Ultimate Street car. Like you are literally all of the number ones that exist pretty much. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, again, I'm lost for words. Like, I don't know what to say. So. The event isn't all about winning or where you rank. It's about showcasing every single car and proving that they're all more than just drag specials. They're all ultimate street cars. Well, out of everyone in the top of the field in the Turbo Smart Ultimate Street Car Challenge, Tony's Performante was a big contender. He came second. George, you're in the top five as well. You're defending champion. Yep. What was it like coming into this year, looking around at what was what was in this field? Ridiculous, right? It's, it's daunting. You've got a, a lot of good cars here. You know, you've got the V10s, very similar platform that, you know, we all have. Uh, different horsepower, different turbos. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we all had fun. We, you know, we all survived. <laughs> so it was great. And, um, you know, I enjoyed myself again this year. Mate, it was, it was just insane to watch them go tit for tat. And it really did come down to, like, the cars are all amazing. It came down to basically what happened out there and out there. And, Tony, you got a new mile-an-hour record for this place, like, completely outright for all the street cars, so close to ET as well. You must be pretty happy yeah. with at least coming home with that, right? Yeah, we did, uh, ETs were better today. We did 1503, 8503, and the same mile-an-hour, 182.19, with the headwind. <laughs> so uh, that's going to be taking a few off, so... Hopefully the wing swings around so we can set it again. Speaking of the records, you know that you had the drag battle outright record. You know that technically, if you didn't do it in a certain order, it, that time actually got broken like 13 times this weekend already. Yeah, look, well, it's good. <laughs> records are meant to be broken. So, uh, listen, there's, there's absolutely no hard feeling amongst the team. You know, we all want everybody to do their best in exactly with our competitors also. So, uh, look, we sort of cherish the moment. We all come out here. We have fun. Um, you know, we, we test our cars over and over again. You know, they're surviving and we're just getting better. You know, John's done a, a, a top time at uh, 145. Uh, you know, Tony with the mile an hour. So all the cars are capable of doing it. Um, you know, again, on the drag track, it's going to be different. Uh, but on this track here, you know, I think we're all happy. The biggest thing with this, though, is this is a changing of the guard. GTRs, and I'm talking RB, Skyline GTRs have held the outright streetcar ET and mile an hour records for so long. Not anymore. V10 twin turbos have got it. Big question is, will you be back? Definitely. Awesome. Be back? I'll be back. And I thought when you said we're going to change the guards, I thought, you know, me, me and Tony <laughs> being the old guys here. <laughs> that too. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm getting there, see? <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed the coverage from our largest Turbo Smart Ultimate Streetcar competition to date. As you can see, the cars were super competitive against each other. If anything, it was actually the driver that separated the score more than anything else. And Precision Racing obviously have mastered the twin turbo V10 and R35 platform. But I was super impressed with the Skylines from B2R and the Audi TT RS as well. Overall, the competition isn't about who wins or who loses or where you finish. It's about showcasing every single car at the event and just how good they all really are. Now, if you're already a subscriber to our channel, you can take it one step further and become a member of our channel by clicking the join button. $5 a month Australian. In US dollars, that must be like three cents. Uh, you get access to exclusive content, discounts, uh, exclusive Q&As, and we're going to be starting very soon uh, a raffle for all of our members where we give away performance parts every month. So click the join button and get on board and get some extra cool stuff and win some stuff as well. Now, next lot of coverage for this year's Tuna's Edge Drag Battle will be an overview of the event plus the shootout before we get into the four, six, eight cylinder and the supercar categories as well. Stay tuned.